This podcast is brought to you by Mapper Forward's new Patreon community, the Global Coffee Think Tank. Check the show notes or head to patreon.com forward slash Mapper Forward to find out how you can become a member today. Welcome to the Daily Coffee Pro by Mapper Forward friends. I'm your host, Lee Safar, and today we are starting episode one of a new series with Todd McCarthy, uh, an Australian coffee professional and business owner. Todd, welcome to the podcast. Thank you very much, Lee. Great to be here. We're going to have a great chat, sir. Uh, we're going to talk about some controversial shit uh, in our series. Absolutely. Be- because we are going to talk about, I mean, I guess the theme for our conversation is what's changed in the industry since we started it. Now, you've been in the industry long over a decade and mm-hmm. me too. And we have worked in some of the s- similar places and we have seen yeah, the industry so change. <laughs> So before we start d- diving into all of that, why don't you tell everyone who you are and and a bit about your background? Uh, well, I sort of I started off as a, a barista. I then worked my way into quality control and, and cupping, uh, then into roasting. Uh, now a Q grader, cafe owner, uh, theorist, dick thinker, <laughs> slightly crazy. The list goes on. Kindred spirit to me with all the crazy thinking and all of that kind of stuff. We have epic conversations and I felt that the world was being denied of the opportunity to to get insight into that. So that's why you're on the podcast. Um, We tend to have conversations that drive us into where could the future of the industry be? Mm -hmm. And so throughout this series, uh, What the kinds of things we're going to talk about, and specifically in today's episode, we're going to talk about how the industry has changed since we were puppy baristas in this industry. (laughs) We were little babies and uh, we worked at some of the best, um, what were known as some of the best places uh, around town. And then as we flourished off into business owners, how the industry has changed. So that's what we're specifically going to talk about today. So in your mind... Where do you think that, what, what do you think has changed in the industry um, over your time in the industry? Yeah, well, I guess the, the question is somewhat twofold. Um, I've been involved uh, in the cafe and coffee industry uh, in some way, shape or form since I was about nine or 10. Uh, my, my family is, uh, in, hospitality is just ingrained in, in who we are. Uh, but uh, yeah, nine or ten years old. We're talking late nineties, uh, if I dare say. Wow! Uh, but most of my memories uh, from that time period, uh, I just felt this gravitational force around an espresso machine that I was just automatically drawn to. Mm-hmm. Um, and these are the days of like multi-dimensional cappuccino foam coming over the top of the cups. Bubble and... bath. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> now they're making cats out of them. And uh, now we, I mean, now we have a, a worldwide competition that rewards the development of uh, perfectly formed microfoam and latte art. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the, the progression in that discipline alone uh, is astounding without taking into account all of the other segments of the industry uh, and the changes that they've seen. The, the environment in a cafe when you and I were little babies in this industry was very different to the way it is now. Absolutely. The way people got treated back then compared to the way people get treated now is very differently. How have you seen that evolve over that time? Well, it's all, I think uh, there's that sort of really hard line approach, I think, is is just really softened. Mm -hmm. Uh, But, I mean, if you you fast forward, 10 years from, uh, from that nine or 10 year old Todd, um, sure we've moved away from all that, that uh, those fluffy cappuccinos, but from the perspective of a barista and uh, during that time, that's the only perspective uh, that I had. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there was a, a, there was a really sincere feel. Uh, there was something sort of really tactile uh, to preparing coffee uh, and those environments. I mean, Hey, they were, they were harsh and they were brutal and they were, they were fast paced and they were really challenging and they were really competitive. And dysfunctional um, and aggressive. 
Yeah, all, all, of, all of them. They really were. Um, but, and I'd hold on to most of the adjectives that I'd used to describe coffee back in those days. Mm. Um, but nonetheless, I mean, I, given, even given the, the environment that we were working in, you still felt as if that it was a, a form of art. Um, there, were, there were no scales and, I mean, combine that with manual tamping uh, and it just felt so right and so real, even though there was all of this craziness happening Chaos. around you. Um, but, I mean, from the perspective of a barista, I mean, adding scales into the mix, I mean, that, that uh, was a, a game changer for lots, lots of people. And, and those who were making coffee back in those days, uh, back in sort of, yeah, mid to, mid to late uh, 2000s, uh, it was sort of a sink or swim thing. Um, but what I know most about that time is that uh, we were really hungry for information. Uh, there, was, there was little literature. Uh, everyone had their own terminology. Everyone used different terms for absolutely everything that, that went in. Uh, and we we're all just sort of scraping by uh, in, internally uh emotionally uh yeah i mean it was all really quite difficult in in sort of crazy environments like that uh, but we we're yeah creating our own theories and executing forward experiments and uh and if you were making coffee back then and, and you still are now uh you were a part of something that was crazy scary but fun uh but the mentality uh that was forged out of that period is that uh Information's powerful, uh, data's powerful, and I guess that uh, that art has uh, it's turned into into science, really. Yeah, I remember, um, I remember going to the United States for a tour that I was doing with the cast from Twilight for my music mm -hmm. career, and I was still working in cafes part time at that time mm -hmm. as a barista. And I remember going there, and I was staying in Venice Beach. And in Venice Beach, uh, the, out the closest cafe was the new Intelligentsia store. Okay. And I went in, when my team and I went in there. Um, I saw them weighing stuff, and I was like, "What the fuck is going yeah. on here?" <laughs> I'm like. Yeah, yeah. Not only did it take them 20 minutes to make me a coffee, but, yeah. you know, they're weighing lying. everything and they're timing everything and they're doing what. And I was working, you know, by that point I, ha I had worked in a lot of the same places that you had worked and we didn't do any of that stuff. And, oh. you know, we were revered as some of the best cafes in, in the world. Um, but then I tasted their coffee and I was like, we really need to up our game. Absolutely. And there's something else that you talked about that uh, I I really resonate with. It was like this chaos that existed in the workplace back then mm. that I'm not sure if it doesn't exist now. Um, I just know that it was so prevalent in cafes back then mm. that there was this disconnect between the chaos and as you said, like this beauty about making kind of, it, it almost felt spiritual when yeah. a group yeah, of people yeah. would working together as dysfunctional as it was when they got yeah. into flow and, you know, you're making 2000 espresso based drinks a day. Yeah. And the three of you are trying to figure out a rhythm to get there and yeah. you spend hours on end not speaking to each other but using kind of like uh, this flow of espresso making as a yeah. language between the three. Body language it, as well. Uh, I mean, we pick up on that. And that's the vibe that, uh, that yeah, that goes into uh, big services like that. Uh, and, yeah, it's, it's an incredible feeling once you do get in that flow. But, yeah, I mean, hampered by that is just sort of, yeah, as you said, all the chaos that surrounds it. What do you, what do you think attracts people? Like over... Like now I feel like there's something different that attracts people to the coffee industry to the than industry. what we used to. Yeah. Do you yeah. agree? Yeah, yeah, I think so. It's uh well it's sort of it's it's going both ways. I mean it's 
uh, we've we've seen a lot of people leave the industry as well uh, in, in recent times. Mm. Uh, but yeah, as a sort of cafe owner, uh, that's the thing that uh, I'm currently working on is is how to engage people who are on the cusp of really getting into the industry or doing something completely different. They're sort of right. they're, they're on that edge. Uh, and they're the sorts of people who are like, okay, well, they're looking around the place. They've got they're in tune with what's going on, um, but they they need that sort of that constant stream of information and, and knowledge that uh, that sort of enables them to make the decision of like, oh, okay, hey, there's there's other things that I can start to think about rather than just putting coffee into a basket, making a flat white out of it, serving that per- that person with, uh, with with the best service that I can. Uh, so yeah, I think that's. Uh, that that engagement into people coming in, I think, is really important because it, uh, it can so easily just go the other way, mm. uh, and then we we perhaps uh, yeah lose someone who could be a great barista, a great cupper, a great roaster, a, a great green trader, anything. I mean, I tell you, I think a, a lot of it uh, does start uh, at uh, a cafe level. So yeah, it sort of uh, is 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 being able to, uh, I guess, foster that, that really nurturing uh, entry in, into, that, into the industry uh, for them to, to flourish and realise the opportunity and then, uh, and then go from there. Now, we can't talk about what's changed in the industry without addressing the fact that when you and I started out in the industry, Rostretto's... <laughs> Oh, <laughs> we're the second breakfast. Yeah, <laughs> no right. All of a sudden, they're double the size. And it only I, you know, I didn't even think about it when I was thinking about what we we're going to talk about. They didn't even remember the fact that. Yeah. Back then, we used to say the blacker the better. Yeah. The <laughs> shorter like, the sharper. The shorter the sharper. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, dear. Fuck, we thought we knew everything, didn't we? I know, right? Um, and, now, <laughs> and now we know that that is just absolute shit. Um, yeah. So, you know, flavor's another thing that's changed, I guess, in the way that we yeah, extract and the way that we approach it. And, and numbers, I think, have had a lot to do with that, right? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, I think the, the, the numbers-based game, that, that all sort of – uh, that is really amplified in 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 the coffee roasting sphere. Uh, but I mean, I, I I spent a number of years in in roasteries before I started roasting myself. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I mean, even in that even in that sort of three or four year time period, uh, no one was using uh, data logging software. Uh, but it wasn't until I started roasting myself that it was like, okay, well, I've got this now. I, I've got this to to work mm. with. Uh, and it gave us a better understanding of our roasting environment. Uh, it allowed us to gain uh, resolution around the whole roasting process. Uh, it enabled uh, better QC practices. And I mean, don't get me wrong. I've got I've got a huge amount of respect for those who who still use a stopwatch and a uh, and a clipboard. Uh, but this is the section of the industry that is ultra reliant on high quality data. Right. Uh, and these data points. I mean, they're They've become accessible in in the in the last sort of ten years through mm. shifts and advancements in technology uh, that was just preposterous to think about twenty years ago. Uh, and out of out of this, I believe, uh, yeah, we've seen a, a shift in quality of our, our roasting and therefore the extraction that we see on the bars. Yeah, awesome. We're going to head into the next episode and we're going to have a conversation about something that I think a lot of people are going to be interested in, which is how has your perspective on the industry shifted Mm -hmm. as you went from being a professional to being a business Mm -hmm. owner? Mm -hmm. Because uh, just briefly, and I'll say this again in the next episode, no doubt, I've seen so many people that have been baristas that are like, I'm going to treat my staff so much better when I become a cafe owner. I'm going to pay them really well and I'm going to buy the best quality coffees and everything's going to be all about the producer and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And then somebody becomes a business owner and they're like, fuck, why didn't anyone tell me that it was going to be this hard? Wow. (laughs) I hope not. So let's talk about that in the next episode, shall we? 
Sounds great. Perfect. Peace, love and peanut butter, everybody. Have an amazing rest of your day. Thanks friends. If you enjoyed this video, here's what you should check out next. Consider supporting Mapper Forward on Patreon and be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell before you leave.